Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. Intercontinental ballistic missiles that was capable of taking over two cities. We're told lofty things, great things, high things. And we're just looking for the opportunity to invade. When we got to the field, we are still looking for some of the people we went with. Because it's obvious the head count is not complete. <laughs> We're not told that at some point, because if you don't wait to meet with a strong man, and you go on at some point he will meet with you Jesus came to the testing grounds before Satan appeared Jesus was not coming there to pray and fast he was coming there to be tempted it was him that decided that the way of praying and fasting would be the most strategic way to approach this situation Most of us did not prepare long term for ministry. You are supposed to have accumulated prayer and fasting, prayer and fasting, prayer for years. If that, if you know that that is the purpose that you are called to execute, oh, and you didn't lay any foundation for it, it's just like marriage. People get married and they want to become naked and run on the beach in some city in South Africa. <laughs> They are not aware that Satan will come. So Satan arrives the ground of testing before they arrive. And they are hoping that they will defeat a spirit being that you encounter unprepared. Uh, he, he will change your channel. <laughs> So Jesus says, no microphone, no PA system, no power am amplifier. Let us go and look for this trouble, this trouble man. Let's find him. How did Jesus find him? Because Jesus was man. Are you there? Satan was still spirit. Are you following? The, the arrangement was not proper. Where is the location where you will find this spirit being? You know what? The moment you begin to pray and fast, you don't need to find him. He will locate you. He will trace you. He will come. I remember when I was posted to Lagos, I was still working and doing ministry. My wife got angry that he wanted to do three days spiritual exercise fasting on the third day of her fast somebody came through the wall and visited her in the room and said madam sarah said you should stop this your prayer and went back through the wall my wife is still here madam sarah we didn't know who she was. <laughs> we had never sent her an invitation to our house, but she began to send emissaries into our bed. I mean, it was our bedroom that they, that, that, that messenger came up. So she now called me and said, it's only when there's trouble there that our wives call us. <laughs> If they drive a car out and the car dies, they will call you and say, come and take your car. <laughs> yeah. The moment you begin to pray, he will come. 
So if you want the devil's address, the, the address is called prayer. <laughs> Prayer, prayer, and you will need to defeat him. Your defeat of him in the closet, you will repeat in your, in your ministry in the public. Because you have been able to bind the strong man, you will spoil his goods. If you know how long we have been preparing for this meeting, oh, we have fulfilled what it takes to spoil his goods you know what what people normally see is when we come like this what goes down what goes down people don't know I just finished a campaign five nations or six nations 16 cities 33 sessions of preaching That's what people see. They'll see me in Cardiff. See me in Manchester. Hey! They say, Kai, ministry is good. Come along, come along. You have not, you have not knocked down the beast of Takra. Day. You want to go to London. I'm telling you by experience. The atmosphere here is a hundred times better than the atmosphere in London. <laughs> You will just discover that you are falling sick because of the weight of spiritual density over the location. You want to go and spoil goods and you have not yet booked an appointment to meet with a strong man. Satan will come to a man of prayer. Temptation will be built around the life of a man of prayer. You'll be tested along the points of temptation. When you conquer along the points of temptation, then the power over nations will be given unto you. We had a small auditorium. I was teaching. I mean, spirit-inspired teaching. <laughs> you, have, you must have heard some of my old sermons. So I used to preach them. But we did not grow. We were 250. That was how the hall. The hall was 250 and we were 250. Not to talk of whether the finances that was coming was enough to take care of the fuel. Let's not talk about that today. A time came when all of hell broke loose. I thought I was in the will of God. I thought I was in the plan of God. So why is it that I'm a victim of temptations, a victim of trials or pressures? The man that chooses the root of prayer has already accepted to meet with a strong man. I don't know why you canceled your appointment with a strong man. That's why your days of visibility have been prolonged. You have sconded from the altar of prayer. That's why your days of visibility have been prolonged. Because before any man enters into the city, he will first enter into the wilderness. So Jesus came before the tempter. He went in search of the tempter, got to the wilderness, set up a prayer altar, and the tempter came to look for him. So that's the first reason why he had to be tempted. He had to do content with a strong man of nations. His ministry was the outcome of that battle. That's the first, first reason. Second reason why he had to be tempted 
was because he came after the order of Adam. And the first Adam was tempted along three points. And Adam succumbed to temptation. And the purpose that God had with Adam was truncated. So now that he had come as the last Adam, he has to be tempted along the same three points. It is his passing the tests that were captured in that temptation that will qualify him to fulfill the role that the first Adam lost out from. You see, uh, the work of God is full of patterns. The same thing that the person that you were called to replace, the same thing he experienced, you are going to experience it. Many of us don't even know where to look. That's why you are confused. You don't know the shape of the battle that has been designed for you. Because you have no knowledge of the kind of labor that took place before you showed up. You thought, okay, that ministry started with you. <laughs> I did a diligent study of the people that have been the shepherds over my city. I'm talking about the chief the major shepherds over my city. I did a study of their lives. I saw the patterns of the points of temptation. Temptation are measured in what? It's the same points that will come to you. The first point is the point of immorality. My city is a riverine city. And the symptom that you find around riverine cities is a high level of promiscuity because sexual spirits operate from the water. You may not believe me. And I, I, I'm not even... Don't believe. <laughs> uh, you know, some of these things I say is from my experience. There's a high density of sexual inducing spirits in those territories. So if you are going to pass the test on that point, you need to tell yourself some truth and go to, go to God to find the grace to survive that kind of test. Because the same patterns of tests that came to Adam were the same patterns of tests that came to Jesus. Three points. And for Jesus, it was three points. If I have time tomorrow, I'll just give you an idea of the points. The same points. The same points. It was many years later that my eyes opened. I remember those three ladies on campus. The failure of ministry in that city is traceable to those three ladies. The whole city, just three. You see, the agents of darkness know the reason why they were sent. Do you know what it means to have a sent mentality? Do you know what it means? Oh, you are not with me. You are not with me. A sent mentality. They tell them, this preacher, that preacher, this preacher, this preacher are the problems we have. So they know who they are fighting. Before it is too long. When you have a sent mentality, even if the place looks like a fortified city, you begin to see the weaknesses of the arrangement. Because you are moving with a sent mentality. Those people know the objective. They know they are sent. Someone that is sent can afford to suffer a while just to gain the advantage that is needed for him to be properly placed to fulfill his mission. And that was how that lady was able to gain her position as the secretary of that man. He took a sent mentality to achieve that. That means, are you there? 
if you have a same mentality and you know what you are called to accomplish you are likely to reject a job that will take you away from the circumference of your mission emphasis that one has more pay it has more pleasure it has more possibility but because you have a set mentality you camp around the assignment to find an opportunity i came to tell you that satan is planning against you satan and the only way you will survive him is that you must have a plan yourself So those three ladies had the dozier of the possible ministers of the future that will become a potential threat to the kingdom of darkness and they were deployed early on before the people became popular oh, I remember I was not I was not closed I was not first 12 on our campus when they say people are anointed they won't count me that's what i'm saying the real anointed people oh jesus christ there was one of them he was a king of dry fasting he goes 21 days dry like a hobby he was the one that taught me how to fast that God did not give him power gifts, but I have it in my spirit. So if I do a little fasting, power will come out. He was a king of dry fasting. Somebody offended him and he fasted dry and cursed the person. The impact was more than using camel padlock to lock an iron door. I was not among the strong. Oh. The, my area of grace then, that is if they will count me at all, was scripture. I was a man of scripture those days, but they were strong men. They were strong men that could pick things from the realm of the spirit. Before we knew it, we didn't see them again. Because of the points of testing we were not careful to check our ancestors why they did not break into limelight five years this lady followed me I got a job went to another city she traced my office in Abuja was when I knew that she had another instrument with which to track it wasn't Google <laughs> I came to tell you they are looking for you I came to tell you. <laughs> why are you going to be tempted Number one. Second Corinthians chapter one. Why are you going to be tempted? Why would the devil invest to tempt you? Second Corinthians chapter one, verse eight and nine. I will use tonight to introduce the message because we have not started the message. The message is around analyzing the three points on the temptation of Jesus. There are three points. If you miss it in any of these points, you don't have a record in eternity. We will go into those points tomorrow after I show you the premise of temptation. When we track the points, we can tell your spiritual journey where you ended, where you, you backslid but you didn't know. 
because this matter we are talking about is so subtle that it bypasses the analytical dimensions of your mind why does God allow us to be tempted second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 8 this is Paul telling us his story he said for we would not brethren have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia that we were pressed out of measure above strength in so much that we despaired even of life but we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God which raises the dead temptation is designed to show us the weakness of our flesh by the time you meet you confront a matter that is orchestrated from the realm of the spirit you will not discover that all the mental powers all the experiential knowledge that you have gathered through your journeys your travels your relating with people is not sufficient to stand a matter that was triggered from the realm of the spirit that's Paul's experience he never knew the futility of his flesh in the face of a spiritual enemy never knew he had confidence in his mental powers his cerebral powers he had confidence in his wisdom he had confidence in his strategic thinking and he held that it worked for him for a long time until the day when the point of temptation became an emphasis he was exposed to a situation that that bypassed his defense structure it took him beyond the limit of his capacity and the reason God subjected him to that level of pressure was so that he would not trust in himself but in God that raises the dead on campus those days there was this guy he was more elderly than we were all right so because of his age we used to respect him and he had a form of spirituality like this and every day he comes he will rebuke our carnality rebuke our yieldedness to the flesh and he was he was moving in that in the air of spiritual pride on the day of his infirmity it was a small lady that that brought the whole mountain down <laughs> may the lord give you understanding in the name of Jesus. <laughs> the whole mountain it is designed to reveal how insufficient you are so that you make up your mind that there is you have no confidence in the flesh you make up your mind to begin the journeys in the spirit because your hope of surviving spiritual resistance will be drawn from your capacity to explore and exploit the powers that are in the holy ghost you will never come to that conclusion until you have a situation that exposes your weakness then you know that i am no match except i become strong in god many people are carrying on in the flesh because they have not seen an evaluation of their flesh power you say we are the circumcision that worship the father in spirit we rejoice in christ jesus and we have no confidence in the flesh the issue of the flesh has already been judged in scripture but the bible reveals that the flesh profits nothing but you will not accept it until you have an experience of it how that in the flesh you attain to your least potential and that potential is not sufficient to 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 resist something orchestrated from the realm of the spirit that's the first reason why god allows us to be tempted when you see how weak you are 
then you will know how much you need to desire God. You will know that you are vulnerable without God's help. The moment the mountain, that elder, they, it, it, it was, that was when he started seeking God. He now knew that what he was doing was not Christianity, it was religion. You will, you will labor in religion for a long time. It will take a temptation to reveal the futility of the foundations that you have built. minister of the gospel if it goes for seven days dry will send me a text i just finished seven days dry <laughs> it goes for five will send me text i finished five days just now <laughs> but every quarter every quarter every three months there's a discovery of a lady that he slept with. Which kind of dry, which dry fasting are you doing that ends in? Until the cloak of spiritual pride is taken away, you will not, your state of vulnerability is not revealed. So that you can lock on to Jesus and hold, oh my God. We were traveling anytime we are doing a road trip four hours you will hear me saying things like oh jesus have mercy and it is it's almost involuntary now because for hours that i pray there's no prayer point the prayer point is jesus have mercy <laughs> suddenly suddenly i have an insight into how weak i am i cry <laughs> Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. As we are going in the car, suddenly it, it just downs on me that hey, my enemies are many. Said, Jesus! Jesus, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. Then before you you you, you find some rest, then you will now receive a two text message, two WhatsApp messages that came almost at the same time. One from an intercessor in Liverpool, a white woman. He said, oh, I see witchcraft over you. I said, oh, Jesus. 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 The same message from two people in two different parts of the world. Jesus, have mercy. 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 You will not you you will you will begin to pray always when this this vulnerability i'm talking about when it downs on you he said this happened that we should not trust in ourselves but in god which raises the dead have mercy have mercy tonight the prayer point is easy very simple jesus what have mercy have mercy second reason why god will allow us to be tempted is so that we can experience and realize the grace that he has deposited in us the Bible says that we have this treasure in eating vessels. There is a treasure that is hidden in your eating vessel. That the excellency of the power might be of God and not of us. Are you there? That's what? What scripture? Second Corinthians chapter. Chapter. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power might be of God and not of us. What is the testimony? Next verse. They say we are troubled on every side. The reason why we are not distressed is because of grace. He said we are perplexed. But the reason why we are not in despair is because we found grace. Next, he said we are persecuted. The reason why we don't feel forsaken is because we found grace. 
we are cast down the reason why we are not destroyed is because we found grace we have this treasure in eighteen vessels that the excellency of the power might be of God and not of all are you, have you been there before when you were, you were in despair Satan planned that the situation of perplexity will bring you to a point of depression where you will be hopeless but if you have found grace in your vessel what the devil is expecting to become the outcome of that encounter will never result because he cannot predict your elastic limit So the situations that Satan orchestrated against us that was intended for utter destruction became the, the springboard, the very springboard that was made available for us to access higher heights of the grace and the mercy of God. We have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the excellency of the power might be of God and not of us. You know, I came to do something quickly this evening I came to tell you that we are insufficient I came to take you on a journey to take off your eyes from yourself so that we can set that gaze on God a God will allow temptations to come into your space to the end that your eyes be lifted from yourself and then you now begin to look at God the posture of looking upward is the Greek word for anthropos. Anthropos is the word for man, the being that was created to look upward. The reason for your temptations is so that you can be made to angulate your gaze and look from between beyond you to the hills from whence comes your help. Temptation is supposed to bring you that, that knowledge, experiential knowledge, that will make you lift up your eyes to the hills from whence comes your help. Can we cry tonight as a congregation that we lift up our gaze to the hills? We've tried in the flesh for a very long time. Tried in the flesh for years. Tried in the flesh for many days. But today, we want to say we lift up our eyes to the hills. We lift up our eyes to the hills. We lift up our eyes to the hills. Oh, cry to him. Don't lose this moment. Don't lose it. It's a moment of destiny. It's a moment of rewiring. It's a time for grace. We have this treasure in eighteen vessels that the excellency of the power might be of God and not of us. There is a capacity that God wants to unfold in your vessel tonight. There is a capacity that God wants to unveil in your vessel. Something is ordained to happen to you during the course of these days. We set our gaze on the hills, on the heavens, from whence comes our help. Our angulation causes us to look above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Take away our weakness. Take away our infirmity. For indeed we are small. So we set our gaze on him that dwells in the light that no man can approach unto. Come on, see. 
Shiva. Kogo mata konde bai. Ai saba mata koko koko morosi. Eli kope saba. Libo bo santo amaile. Rako babo bo siaba. Eli kapanta boboria. Isko pre la bo saba bante. Obre ko bante la bo bo kosolia. Set your eyes to the hills. The associate of the Mamine Rubas Compa, Pabenose, the Commander, the Cabal. Can you say, my channel shall not be changed? Ima si ameke, rande mo kore masanda, ala la la ba mo seke, la 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 ba mo sanda, mo be ba be na se. Lama Jesus, my channel, 
shall not be changed. My channel shall not be changed. Can you make that your prayer for the next two minutes? My channel. It will not be changed. It will not be changed. It will not be changed. Listen to me, listen to me. The Lord wants to restore someone. Someone whose channel was changed. You were pregnant with a ministry. You received serious opposition before you left a previous ministry. When you set out to begin the work that the Lord asked you to do, you saw the help of God, the commitment of God. But at some point, your channel was changed. The Lord wants to restore you. If you are the one I'm talking about, wave to the preacher. You received so much persecution where you were before before you set out to do what God has called you to do. Those of you whose hands are lifted, can you come here? Because this meeting was ordained tonight for your restoration. Your channel was changed. Your channel was changed. The moment you get out there, begin to ask the Lord for mercy. Ask Him for mercy. The call on your life was so significant. That was the reason why the gates of hell were opened against you. That call cannot just be swept under the carpet. Cry to the Lord as you are standing there. Cry to Him. Right on. Because the Lord will restore you. It is not yet over. It is not yet over. God wants.
comes to restore you. Those of us in the congregation, can we pray for these ones here? Pray for these ones here. Pray for these ones here. The call is significant. The call is significant. The call is significant. That's why persecution broke out. It must be fulfilled. 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 Iso se calando robosite. Mendo si copendo si. Esto me va a cosarte. El amigo Cody. Y copenda. Y cosaba. Y cosaba la ita. El no presto. Y copaba la tele. Isko Bande, Isko Bela Kadia, Isko Bambalaya, Isko Sin. My Kate, My Kate, My Kate, Rube Padaya Kata. The call is significant. It must be fulfilled. It must be fulfilled. It must be fulfilled. Jesus. Listen to me. Listen to me. I see one of you. One of you standing here. God began to show you so much mercy that it's sweet. And powerful prophetic anointing began to work on your life but right now I saw that you are blind you can no longer the person I'm talking about is virtually blind hallelujah God wants to restore that sight that that grace he wants to restore it so I will just pray a brief prayer tomorrow is the miracle night today is to restore my brothers and sisters back into their calling back into the place that the Lord has ordained for them to function Oh my God, 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 oh my God. Father, I ask, have mercy, have mercy, let there be restoration, let there be restoration, in the name of Jesus. I plead with you and I ask all God that it might please you to restore 
this prophetic anointing that began to build on the on the life on the ministry of this one let it be restored let it be restored let it be restored let it be restored in the name of Jesus that from today let the river begin to flow again let it flow again in the name of Jesus thank you father thank you Lord in Jesus name please go back to your seat I want to wait for them to get to their seat I want to pray a prayer we'll do the miracle night tomorrow and um, all the blessings will come tomorrow I want us to go back with gravity the gravity of this message and labor before God this night there's a renewal that God is giving to his people there's a renewal hallelujah and I'm trusting God that every one of us will receive the grace for that renewal in the name of Jesus all right now we are going to pray in a moment um, as I pray the Lord will begin to anoint people that's what I see in the spirit father in the name of Jesus I ask for a fresh anointing on your people and from inside outside from the front to the back choose from among us those that are in need of a renewal of the anointing and invest in the lives of these ones invest 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 in their lives invest in their lives there's an investment an investment is coming upon a lady that i see it's a very powerful investment of the holy spirit coming upon this lady and he's oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god holy ghost it's an investment it's an investment it's an investment holy spirit i ask release the investment upon that sister release the investment upon that brother let it become intense let it become strong in the name of jesus let it become strong in the name of jesus release the investment now I see something like a fire. A fire is coming. A fire is coming. A fire is coming. A fire is coming. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Lord, a new season has come upon us. We ask for a new grace. A new capacity to contend against the enemy. A new capacity to keep the fort. A new capacity to journey the journeys of the spirit. Increase capacity. Increase capacity. In the name of Jesus.
Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.